No, sir, a man don't know what smarts until he's been fell on and rolled over by an 1,800-pound gelding. Nobody throws you and tied you to make you a cowboy. If you hate it so much, why don't you do something else? Well, I, I have given some thought to taking up preaching. <laughs> Seems like anybody can do that. Uh, don't really have to know nothing. <laughs> of course, you know, uh, you could always uh, ride on down to Butte or Cheyenne and learn to be a pin and button over in the mercantile. Yeah. Nah, nah, a woman ain't gonna buy no pins and buttons from me. Because I, uh, I got calluses on my hands and scars of time on my face. Besides, I, uh, I walk with a limp from where, uh, from where I was kicked in the ankle by, by a 17-year-old. 17-year-old Nevada, Nevada mayor named, named Gloria Jo McKinney. Uh, I ain't been 40 years old, and I'm, uh, I'm already a walking ruin. Well, cowboying's all I ever knowed. It's all I know how to do. Come on, we gotta move along. We get to that dance. Now, where be that dance you're talking about? That Christmas dance, the schoolhouse, down the mountain. You gotta get cleaned up. You mean to tell me that you are gonna ride 20 miles in the cold and then 20 miles back again just to go to a dance? You see the old pretty girls there they had last year? One of them kissed me. Oh. Ha! That is the poorest deal I ever heard tell of. 40 miles and a cold ride just for a kiss. Uh, I ain't never been that young. Kissing's got nothing to do with being young. It's got to do with desire and intent. 40 miles ain't nothing. I rode 65 miles from the Bar D last Christmas. You got to admit, Stubby, that a 40-mile ride on a bone-chilling night is a mighty hard way to go just to look for a girl. Not if you ain't ever had one to call your own. Ah. What the devil are you doing? Looking on top of that cabinet. That's why. Is there something of interest up there? There ain't nothing up there but uh, dust and rat leaves. What'd you think it'd be up there? Pringles candy. That's why. And it beats me where he's hit it. I've searched every nook and cranny in the bar and the tack room, so it's got to be in here. You mean to tell me you would steal that boy's Christmas candy? I never said nothing about stealing. He's got a whole box of Christmas chocolates. All I want is to borrow one little piece. Well, yeah, it looks like you're not going to get it. When him and Red are done feeding them cattle, he's on his way. Hey, Pringle. Boss's wife said to come by the big house. Something come for you this morning on the supply wagon. Thanks, Skipper. I know what that is. You best remember that a working hand don't go to the big sugar's front door. You go to the back door with a mouthful of yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am. Oh, yeah. Oh. A 
Come in, Mr. Pringle. Thank you, ma'am. Come in out of the cold. Uh, the dress goods I ordered for you arrived this morning on the supply wagon. I I'll get them for you just as soon as I finish stuffing this turkey. Won't you have a seat? It's all the same, ma'am. I just soon stand. Nonsense. You're cold. You'll sit down in my kitchen and have a cup of coffee. There you are, Mr. Pringle. Thank you, ma'am. Fresh, round, and hot. Uh, please sit, Mr. Pringle. Ma'am, I don't mean no disrespect, but you don't have to call me Mr. Pringle. Why not, may I ask? It's your name, isn't it? Yes, ma'am, it's my name. But at least ways I think it's my name, but it sounds like some trail that I never rode down. Ain't got no map to it, either. You sure do have a nice home, Mrs. Harper. Kind of puts me in mind of warm arms. Put you in mind of what, Mr. Pringle? Oh, just a, a nice home, ma'am. Mr. Pringle, that's the nicest compliment I've ever had. A minute like that, ma'am. And I accept it. And thank you for it. And you sit down. I'll get your things. Hello there, Stubby. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, sir. Uh, you're, uh, you're on your way to the dance at the schoolhouse, I understand. Yes, sir, as soon as I can get there. Right, well, sit, sit. Mr. Pringle, this is our daughter, Martha. She just came home yesterday from boarding school in Colorado. Martha, meet Mr. Pringle. Oh, pleased to meet you, Miss Harper. Mm -hmm. Hello. Oh, pretty? Yes, ma'am, real pretty. Oh, well, now tell us, what's her name? Oh, I don't know yet, Miss Harper. I aim to find out tonight at the dance. Oh, I met her last year at the dance. I just forgot to ask her her name. <laughs> I'm a, I remember to ask her tonight. Well, you all uh, have a Merry Christmas. A Happy Christmas. When I ordered that box of chocolates last October, I asked you if you wanted a box, too, and you said no. You remember? Stubby, I couldn't afford it. When a man's thinking about his retirement, he can't afford to pay 60 cents for a box of brown sweets. But you're young. You can afford to buy a box of chocolates and give an unfirm, stove-up old man one piece for Christmas. Red, what do you think of my brand new monkey ward shirt from one of them uh, hot tone factories in New York City? Look at them buttons. Solid staghorn. Boy, you are mean enough to steal a fly from a blind spider. Never mind about that shirt. What do you think, Red? I'm an old man. Old men deserve at least one piece of chocolate a year. Kind of eye-catching, don't you think? Uh, kind of girl-catching, you mean, don't you? Well, same thing, don't you think, Red? Yeah, but it's a plum pity you got to wear such a pretty shirt with them scuffed-up old boots. Uh, here, here, here. And them pants. Uh, they look like there was something thrown away by a Custer Scout. I know you got the chocolates hid somewhere around here. Admit it, boy. I sure I admit it, old hunk. Well, it's a plum mystery where they be at. Be they in the bunkhouse? They sure are. Where at? Looking for them chocolates is like looking for a whisper in a big wind. Boy, don't turn your back on me when I'm talking about something as important as one pitiful piece of chocolate for the agent. What are you doing there? Get out. That's my trunk. The reason that you never found them box of chocolates is because you never looked close enough to home. Do you mean them little gum tingling, belly warming sweets has been in my possession all along? Boy, you got no heart at all perpetrating an outrage like that on me. I just figured that since you got nothing in that trunk but a bunch of old clothes that wouldn't make a decent dog bed, that you'd have no call looking there. All I want is one piece. Just one little piece for Christmas. No. I ain't gonna break up a set. 
A pretty girl's gonna get that box of candy. I don't want to look in here finding one piece missing. She might think I care more about candy than I do her. Merry Christmas. Mean. Yes. Mean and stingy is what that boy is. Selfish young thing. He don't know what giving is all about. Maybe I should have went with him. If I remember right, a lady smells awful good. I know, Franklin, we got a ways to go, but I'm promising you now a double ration of oats when we get back. You're good to me. Hey, Stubby. Hug a fat girl for me, will you? What are you doing? You trying to cripple yourself? I ain't no way to chop wood. Where's your man? I ain't here to harm you none, if that's what you're thinking. He's inside. He, he's sick. Bad? The doctor come up the mountain yesterday. He says he thinks he'll do all right, but he's... He's almighty weak. He's... He's all wobbly. Sleeps most of the time. Sleeps? I mean, he's sleeping while you're out here chopping wood. Don't fault him none. He's been mighty tired. Even before he took sick, he was all wore out. He tried to get up only a while ago. He, he, he couldn't even get his pants on. He, he just fell flat on the floor. Man, why don't you go inside and get yourself warm? I'm going to chop you some wood. I can't pay you. I didn't say nothing about pay. Now, go on inside. Let me get this done. Me and Franklin got to be on our way. Franklin? That's my horse, ma'am. Franklin T. Sullivan. Me and him have been partners for oh, about five years now. Oh, there you are. That should last you for a while. God Ooh. willing, my man should be up soon and able to do for herself. Uh-oh. Looks like I woke somebody up. Oh, honey, now please go back to bed. You're going to catch cold in your bare feet. What your mom's telling you is the truth. You don't want to get sick, do you? Honey? I'll put her back. Come on. Are you Santa Claus? <laughs> no, honey. I'm just something the wind blowed in. Santa Claus coming? Oh. Well, uh, a little bit. I, I guess if he's in your heart, then uh, he must be sneaking around here somewhere close. But you better go on to sleep now. Come on. You're not supposed to be looking for him. He's supposed to be the one looking for you. me that's thanking you. How's your husband? He's doing better. He's asleep now. There ain't many cowboys that are bothered with homesteaders. Nesters, I think they call us, and worse. Yeah, there's a whole lot of understanding to go along with how cowboys feel about farmers. I guess they just figured that they was here first. Well, they wasn't. The Indians was here first, and the cowboys stole it from them, just like the banks stole our farm back in Missouri. They put us off the land we'd worked for years put armed guards on it and threatened us. I didn't mean to rally you nothing. 
I got some cold biscuits and some honey. Let me fix your plate. No, thank you, ma'am. I ain't got time to sit down and eat. Like I said, me and Franklin got to be getting on down the mountain. You gonna be all right? Oh, hope so. We've been here for almost a year, working 160 acres. It'd be hard foot to feed a family of jackrabbits. Oh, but we'll make out. As soon as the mister gets on his feet again, you sure you won't have some cold biscuits and honey? No, thank you, ma'am. I got to be getting on my way. Merry Christmas. Same to you. Where is it? Where's what? Your tree. Your Christmas tree. I ain't had time to cut one. <laughs> Your kid's got to have a Christmas tree, man. It's important. When you were little, did you always have a tree for Christmas? I never did. That's how come I know it's important. Stubby's there yet, Red? If I know him, he is. He's likely sweet-talking some 90-pound thing into a corner right now. Hmm. I wonder, is her mama there? Whose mama? That 90-pound thing. I reckon she has a real nice mama. Somebody about my age. You thinking about marrying the 90-pound thing's mama? Mm. I'm ruminating on how it might be. What if Pringle married the 90-pound thing and you did marry the mama? That'd make you Pringle's daddy-in-law. You wouldn't want nothing like that. How come I wouldn't? Because the boy is selfish. You wouldn't want nobody for a son-in-law that wouldn't give an old man a piece of chocolate for Christmas. Just wondering what I'm missing down there at that Christmas dance. There. Now that is about the most perfect shaped Christmas tree I've ever seen. It is pretty, ain't it? Now you get to do the decorating part. Got to get going. Merry Christmas. Something wrong? I intended fixing some things to put on a tree, but I ain't had time. Now you go on. It's the tree's a thing. It ain't the decorations. Huh. It's a whole thing, man. No. It ain't just a horse. It's the horse and the saddle and the bridle and the reins and the stirrup and the cinch. I don't imagine you got a clock in the house anywhere, do you? I'd kind of like to know what the hour is. Yes, he is. I keep it running, but I don't know. Time don't seem to have no meaning out here. 9.15. Mm -hmm. That's not late. I'll tell you what. I'll help you make some decorations. Oh, well, you seem awful anxious to get somewhere. Well, I am. I'm going to get there, too. I'm going to the Christmas dance at the schoolhouse down the valley. Well, you best go on, then. Well, I got time to spare. Just getting started. Probably be going to the early hours. By the way, I'm Stubby Pringle. I pulled down a dollar a day at the Triple X Ranch. A dollar a day in found. Of course, the uh, found ain't much to brag about. <laughs> Come to think of it, the dollar ain't either. If you don't mind me asking, uh, What's your name? Henderson. Georgia Henderson. My man's name is Ben. He was young and strong like you when we started out, with great expectations and lots of hope. Well, some folks' living takes a lot of lasting, and 
It's the last thing that makes you old. Ma'am, you're not old. No, <laughs> you couldn't be more than what? 30? <laughs> well, surely, ma'am, you're not more than 30. You're very kind, Stubby Pringle. No, ma'am, I'm just trying to be honest every once in a while for the Bible's sake. I'll tell you what. Now, you make me up some paste out of flour and water, get me uh, scissors, some paper, and we're going to get this job done in no time. Well, that's all we'll need, just paper and paste and scissors. Mrs. Henderson, dear lady, you are talking to the world's champion, bulldogger, bronc buster, post hole digger, fence rider, and jerky chewer, and Christmas tree decorator. <laughs> We might have some paper, but not much. Well, like the saying goes, ma'am, all my life I've been living between a rock and a hard place. And the only thing I understand is not much. Of course, like most people, I'm hoping someday to have too much. Well, I've always heard that having too much of anything can make you sick. Oh, ma'am, I think there's some things in life that you can never get too much of. I'll scare up some paper and scissors. Four Menards, the old duck under the sash jail. All they swing, swing that girl. Head all eight to the center and back. All eight for the right hand swing. All eight for the left hand swing. All eight with a two-hand swing. It couple sashay down and sashay back. It couple reel the set. All the way down and all the way back. Sashay back on the same old track. It couple broke cast off. The others follow, make an arch, they all duck under. Do you have family somewhere, Stubby Pringle? Beg your pardon, ma'am. Family? Do you have family? Yes, I got family. Now, I reckon you could say I got about the biggest family there is anywhere. Oh, how big is that? Well, I've never counted them, but I must have hundreds. First boss, I got, uh, Red, Old Hollander, Skipper. Your brothers? I guess so. They're the ones I live with in the bunkhouse, the Triple X. But then I got a whole bunch of others in bunkhouses all over Wyoming, Montana. I mean, I don't think you'd go anywhere in this country without bumping into some of my family. Man. They're in the high country, in the low country, in the prairies, in the plains, in the gullies, and the washes, and. Some of them's in the ground. You mean dead? Yes, ma'am. Dead. Dead from pneumonia. The cold, you know. The heat, too. Dead from... <laughs> bulls, stallions, snakes. Dead from guns, some of them. You sound like you do a lot of thinking about death. No, ma'am. No, I think mostly about life. Because I love it. <laughs> I mean, ma'am, there ain't nothing better than waking up in the morning knowing that you got a chance at another day. It's just that I, sometimes I, I just, I don't know, I feel a terrible loss when a good person buys a farm. Buys a farm? Dies. Yeah, because, you know, when a, a, a good person dies, man, I mean, that person has been a very big part. A big part of the days that I wake up looking forward to. Hmm. Now, ma'am, what, what do you think? Up? Go a little lower. Down more. 
That's good. What do you think? Here. prettier tree back in Missouri. Not even with them store-bought decorations and tinsel snow. Now, you go get your Santa Claus things and you put them under the tree. You don't mean to tell me, Mrs. Henderson. Oh, why don't you go on to your dance, Duffy Pringle? You just go on to your dance and your music and your pretty girl. And stop reminding me of... Things I should have done and ain't, because I couldn't. I thank you. I, I thank you mighty much for what you've done. You just go on. Mrs. Henderson. You think I'm a bad mother, don't you? No, I don't think that. You got your little ones all nestled down and warm in the other room there. That shows caring. Hey, and love. Mrs. Henderson. I wanted more than anything for them to get something from Santa Claus. I but... know you did. Listen, love is something that you can't get with money. You're poor. I'm poor. I ain't gonna let poor beat me. Well, the young ones, they understand. They, they ain't expecting nothing. But that's all the more reason they should get something, don't you think? Oh, but there ain't nothing. But there weren't a tree there, neither. A little while ago, there weren't no decorations. See, the way I see it, I mean, there ain't gonna be nothing there unless you put it there. So now you get your needle and you get your thread and I'm gonna be right back. I know you're disgusted, Franklin, having to stand around in all this snow and cold. You just keep your mind steady on all them good oats that you get to eat when you get home. It's a horse's life to have to wait around a lot, you know? Ain't no fault of mine. Good Lord made you a horse. But you bear in mind, he made a lot of asses, too. Somebody else live around here? No. Why? How come I just heard sleigh bell? What? Sleigh bell. I just heard sleigh bell. You couldn't have. This is the only cabin there is between the Triple X Ranch and the valley. <laughs> Ma'am, I used to work for a rich family down beside the Bighorn Mountains in Wyoming, and every Christmas, that whole family would ride around in a sleigh with them bells tingling, so I know what sleigh bells sound like. And besides, that's not the kind of sound that you think you hear when you don't. Man, I think that you can make your little girl a pretty dress for Christmas in no time with that. Oh. You giving me these dress goods? Well, I got no use for it. Oh, but what's a cowboy doing with dress goods in the first place? You want to know the truth about that? I won that there bowl of dress goods in a poker game. That's all the poor fella had left. He was taking it home to his wife. <clears throat> well, I didn't mean to take it off of him. Poker is poker. Thank you. Oh, it'll make uh, a pretty dress. I was just happy to find something that could be used for. I was sure tired of hauling it around. What are you carving? A horse. Pretty little boy. This is gonna be a cat-hipped, u-necked, flop-eared strawberry roll, fit enough to carry him to the everlasting back. You 
I'm a good man, Stubby Pringle. <laughs> oh, ma'am. I'm just your average cowboy. A day late and a dollar short, my saddlebag's full of yesterdays. Now, if you want your little girl to find that dress under the tree, you better get serious about your song. Because, man, you can't call back no failed Christmas. Hey, old Hollander. Ain't you two going to bed? It's almost midnight. I can't sleep. You was just sleeping. I ain't going to bed or to sleep until Pringle gets back. Me neither. What's Stubby got to do with anything? I want to hear about that party. I want to hear about his girl. She's probably on a diet if she's like most females I know, and she won't even eat them chocolates. More than likely, she feed them to her dog. I can see it now. Dog eating all them chocolates, and all I wanted was one little bitty piece. Well, Pringle will tell you about it tomorrow. And there ain't a dog nowhere that appreciates sweets. Well, Pringle will tell you about it tomorrow. He just eats them to fill his miserable gut. Well, can't Pringle tell you all about it tomorrow? I want to hear about it while it's fresh. That's right. I don't want no warmed-up story. I want it fresh out of the oven. Was it your move, old Hollander, or was it mine? I think it was. I was in the boss's house for the first time today, man. Mm. You should have seen it. Mm. Sumptuous, I reckon. Well, I don't know what sumptuous means, but that place was grass billet with spot cash. What? Rich, man. Rich. Oh. No, but more than that, it was, uh, it was kind of a warm place. It, a home. But that ain't really saying it either, because what you got here is a home, too. What I'm trying to say is when... when I, I walked around in that house and I felt the good feeling that was there, all I could think of was that... I want that someday. Well, it takes money, Stubby Pringle. It takes a lot of money. No, no, I'm talking about the feeling, Mrs. Henderson. Not the improvements. Well, what do you think it'd take to get that feeling you're talking about? The right girl. <laughs> Rounded couple and steal a little kiss. Back to the center and swing your miss. You circle up four, one time you go. Break it all up with a do paso. Chicken in the red pan of picking out dough. One more time and on you go. Round that couple and take a little peek. Back to the middle and swing your sweet. Round that couple, gonna peek once more. Back to the center and circle up four. Circle up four. Break it all up with a do paso. One more time and on you go. All right, swing. Now, that. Ain't a bad looking animal, if I do say so. How judge he stands about 16 hands, weighs in about 11, 1200 pounds. 
<laughs> now that is a nice dress. That is a real nice dress for a little girl. She's going to be proud to wear that. I can hear you. She merry gentlemen, let none of you dismay. La dum dee 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 dee. Howdy. Howdy. What can I do for you? Now, if you've come to this Christmas party, you know, might be late. How long has it been over? Oh, uh, I poured the last night here about 30 minutes ago. Guess everybody had a good time. You should have seen it, boy. Them girls was gusted up there, looked beautiful. Boys all had their hair plastic with bare grease, and kids was swamping, stomping, old folks rattling their bones. 
Everybody has a good time on our Christmas party. I'm sorry you got here late. There ain't nothing here for you, but uh, here's a piece of cake here if you want. You don't want it? No, oh, I strapped myself with a bunch of fried chicken, potato salad, ham biscuits. <laughs> I'm firmly packed. So go ahead and do as I say. Take it, piece of cake. Go ahead. Wrap it up in something. Unless you won't eat it here. No, but uh, I could use it for this old boy, a friend of mine up at the Triple X Ranch. He's got an awful sweet tooth. Thank you. Triple X? Whew. That's a fur piece. That's 20 miles from here. Yeah. Go <clears throat> ahead. Take it. Huh? Go do as I say. Take it. Might jolly that old dude up a bit. Franklin, Christmas oats, just like I promised you. Praise the Lord, you're back. Maybe now we can get some sleep once you tell us about it. Tell you about what? The party, boy, the dance. What's this? Open it. <laughs> that ain't the prettiest thing. A man ever set eyes on. An old man, you mean? Young man, like Stubby and me here, we got we got other things to hold do. Hold on, now. just hold on. I've got to have some reverent quiet here for a moment. And if one of you's a mind to, you might sing a hymn while I do this. Takes my breath plumb away. <laughs> now, come on, come on, now, Stubby. Tell us about it. Tell us about the girls and the ladies. Was they pretty? Red. They was the prettiest things that you ever seen in your life. I mean, they was... What city folks call gorgeous? Go on, go on. There was yellow-haired ones. There was brown-haired ones. And there was black-haired ones with skin so clear that you could see right through it. Oh, go on, go on. Don't stop now. We ain't around the bed yet. Well, I danced with this one. And I danced with that one. A do see do and away we go, dancing and hugging around the floor. And shoot that star right on through and through the floor. And then two and three and a four. And circle your partner around the floor. And a wheel and a deal and a dippity two. And the next pretty girl, she's a cute one too. Yeah, have that. And Red. But you know what? But what, what, what? They all smell different. What do you mean they smell different? A woman smells like a woman, don't she? No, Red. No, each one smells sweeter than the one before. <sighs> and then, when you hold one in your arms, I mean, you just think 
like you're gonna pure die. And, and the lips. Tell me about the lips. Red lips, pink lips. Ooh, just made for kissing, man. And, and just the, made for kissing. And the white teeth. Oh. And the gowns. Oh. And the dresses. Oh. And the ribbons. Every color of the rainbow. Hey, hold on there now. Hey, uh, you ain't said nothing about that girl you were supposed to meet there. Uh, that one you said kissed you last year. Was she there? How ah, well? She was there, Red. Well, come on. Come on, tell us what happened. Huh? I kissed her. And then she kissed me. Uh, and, uh... She asked me that maybe I, I might marry her someday. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Man. Oh, she held me. And I held her. I could feel her heart beating through my new monkey wore a shirt. Or maybe it was my heart beating against hers, or both our hearts beating against each other, but gosh. The way I felt, the way I felt then was kind of like the smell of roses on a summer day. Since you don't have to work on Christmas Day. Well done, partner. Jockey is mysteriously trampled to death on Quincy Monday night at 7. Followed by the Yuletide fantasy, The Man in the Santa Claus Suit, starring Fred Astaire at 8. Stay tuned for Partners in Crime next on TV2.